What's up, guys? Nick Wisdom with Heli Direct and also part of Team Ego Drift. Uh, here today to show you how to do a shaft replacement on an Ego Drift motor. Now, why? What are some of the reasons you may want to do a shaft and or bearing uh, replacement in a motor? Uh, could just be wear and tear. Um, you know, motors obviously over time, eventually the bearings uh, may need replacement. Um, but in this instance, this is because this is the shorter shaft. This is the 35 millimeter shaft. And I actually want to uh, change it to the 55 millimeter shaft. I pulled this from a Spectre V1 and it's going into a Logo 700 now. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the shaft. Uh, while I'm at it, I might as well replace the bearings. They come with the shaft, so there's no reason not to put fresh bearings in. Uh, this motor actually doesn't have a ton of flights on it, maybe somewhere between 50 and 70. Um, so really no real need to replace the bearings, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway while I have it open. So uh, a few tools that'll make this easier. You can kind of you know work around some of these, um, but this is a press. Uh, we're going to use this in order to get the shaft out and maybe press the bearings in. Um, we've got an awl. Uh, I have a nail set that I'm going to use to help uh, press the bearings out. This is a set of split ring pliers. Uh, we'll see where these come in handy and a little bit of green thread lock uh, for the bearings. All right, and then we'll need uh, some hex drivers as well to pull the grub screws out. But uh, that said, let's go ahead and get started. Like I you said. may notice this cloth I have on my workbench. Uh, motors are obviously magnetic, uh, have very powerful magnets inside them, and they will attract every little bit of metal filings off of your workbench. Now, this is obviously less than desirable, so I'm going to go ahead and put a towel down so that the motor doesn't pick up anything that's sort of sitting in the surface of my mat. So let's go ahead and take a look at the overhead here. Now, there is a little split ring right here. I'm going to go ahead and put these little pliers in here, pull it apart, and then slide it right off. It sits in a little groove uh, inside the motor. So once you sort of press it out, just pull it right off the shaft and then lay it down. You can see it right there. All right, I'm gonna pull that aside and then there's a little brass spacer here. Let me show it to you. There it is on the shaft. We're just gonna go ahead and pull that off and then set that aside as well. All right. Okay, next up from here is we're gonna pull the can of the motor away uh, from the front um, half here. Now, there's very powerful magnets in here and it's very important that you kind of commit and keep moving. If you sort of half commit and you let your fingertips slip inside here, the magnets will pull the can back uh, over and you will pinch your fingertips and it will hurt a lot. So sometimes having a rag around is very helpful. Uh, the rag can kind of start to jam in around as you start to pull the can away and it'll prevent it from coming back and hitting your fingers. So we're just gonna commit and very carefully with steady pressure, pull the can away. You just gotta get a good bite on it. We'll start to come away. There it goes. We're not going to stop now. Come on. It is amazing. Woo! How strong that force is. It takes a little bit of pressure there, but you can see this is the inside of the motor here. Very nicely wound. And then the can and the magnets inside. And if you do it right, you're not going to scratch any of the magnets. You're going to sort of pull straight out. And then again, we're going to go ahead and lay this towel down on our workbench. Okay, next step is to remove the shaft. And the next thing we need to do is take a two millimeter driver. And there are set screws in here that we need to loosen. Now these are Loctite at the factory. So you do want to carefully, and there is probably a little detent in there. So I'm actually going to completely remove the set screw. I'm going to set it well away from the motor so it doesn't get sucked into the magnets there. And then grab the second one. Make sure you use a high quality driver here. These are metric, so use a two millimeter driver. You don't want to risk rounding the set screw off because you will be forever stuck with the shaft in there. Okay, so now we've got the shaft uh, inset in here and we can work towards uh, pressing it out. So I'm gonna use, this is a half ton press here that we're gonna use to prep this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the can of the motor and set it in the space, and then we're gonna press, I'm just using this to line it up, uh, the shaft out. One of the tricks that Ben, who's the US team manager for Ego Drift, uh, told me about how to get this uh, shaft pressed out is to actually use the screw that you can put into the end of the shaft. I'm gonna go ahead, I believe it's this one here. And try this, and just, I'm just gonna put about two threads in. So now we have, if you look here, something we can press on. So 
got the can and our opening. So now the shaft underneath here has room to get pressed down. And we're just going to put some gentle pressure on that bolt. There it goes. Boom. Did you hear that click? That is the sound of the shaft pressing out of there. And we're going to go ahead and take this bolt out. So sometimes you have to get inventive. I need something just a little bit longer here to get this pressed out. So I'm actually taking a tap and die and it's got a nice flat spot on each end and I'm just going to use it to push this shaft the last little bit out. And I also have to take my press and kind of hang it off the table so that the shaft can go just a tiny bit lower. In a second, you're going to hear ting as the shaft comes all the way out. There we go. Shaft is free. So I just took just something nice and strong, in my case, a uh, tap, but that is the old shaft uh, out of the motor. Uh, so now, looking at our motor, let's see if we can get these bearings to pop out easily. Okay, so you just saw there, what I did is I took the old shaft and I put it gently through the can, rested it on the edge of the bearing, and used my press here to press it out. I did put the uh, same uh, soft cloth there on the press, um, just so I didn't scratch any of the windings and whatnot, gave it a little bit of padding before I pushed those out. So those old bearings came out pretty well. Now, we're gonna use a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of green Loctite for this application. Um, literally less than a drop is what we're gonna use in total. And I'm gonna use an awl, which is kind of a just pointy metal stick here to apply this green Loctite. I'm gonna put the tiniest amount inside uh, both ends here of the can. Uh, not the can, sorry, the stator. So I've scraped most of it off, just putting a tiny bit on the tip and then just rubbing it around to evenly distribute it. And that's that side. We'll go ahead and do the other side. Again, tiny, tiny, minuscule amount here on the tip. You probably can't even see it. And then we're spreading that all the way around because we don't want that to work its way into the bearing at all. So we'll go ahead now and take these bearings here and we're gonna just press fit them in, whoops, into the spot. push down on these, and we may have to use our press to get these to seat properly. These are a very snug fit. Yeah, right, definitely gonna wanna use the press here. It's not quite just a, a push fit. So again, take your rag, set it down, put the motor in the press here. There we go, now you can see it a little better. Now we're gonna take the motor in the press here and just gently and flatly press these down. Let's get our top bearing. Same thing, we're gonna get that started as flat as we can. This one feels like we can almost just push it in by hand. Almost, just a tiny bit of resistance there, so we'll go ahead and press this one in as well. Again, using the old bearing to apply pressure to the new. There it goes, boom. That is our uh, bottom bearing nice and flush. We're just going to give that one little extra tight push here, but that feels really good. Yeah. Okay. With that, we've got our bearings uh, pressed in. Nice and flush. And start reassembly. So I'm going to take the shaft and before we press it back, uh, install it back here, um, I want to talk about, so one of the things with the bearings that you want is that you don't want the shaft to slip in the bearing. So I'm actually gonna put the tiniest amount of green Loctite just inside each of these bearings. And I'm gonna put just, just a minuscule amount. Um, but I do want the shaft to sort of be permanently attached uh, just a tiny bit because I need to make this removable, right? Um, if you put a lot, it'll be, you know, essentially bonding it forever uh, and committing to this size shaft for a long time. So I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny amount on the inside of the berry. I'm going to do that for both of them. Okay, so that's ready there. Now we can work towards reassembly. <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do is take our shaft. Oh, 
try not to scratch it against the magnets like there. It's amazing how much it grabs there and slide it into the bell. Now, there are, if you look here, two flat spots you can see going through there on the shaft. And those need to line up to the spaces where those uh, little tiny grub screws go through. So find those holes in the can of the motor here. And it's probably very hard to see, but there's one right there. There it is. And we're going to line up the flat spot on the shaft with that position and try not to get it grabbed by the magnets. It's a tricky balance here. Flat spot facing upright. Okay, so we're lined up. So now I know that when I press this down this way here, uh, that we're going to be okay. So, okay, so take this back up this way. Take that out here. And then just going to gently push this back, press this down in. There we go. Now we've actually gone a tiny bit too far, so we'll just press it back the other way. Okay, now we are dead flush with the edge of the motor. So we now have our shaft, we've got our bearings all prepped here, and we've got our uh, O-ring and brass ring here ready to go. We've got our two grub screws as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just put a tiny bit of Loctite on these. You could use blue here. I'm gonna use just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of red. And if you're very careful and you just put a tiny amount, I'm actually gonna rub almost all of it off, just putting a little bit in the threads, wipe most of it off on the tail. So there's very little on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and set these guys. And just finger tightening for now. Same thing with the other one. Finger tightening, because I want to see what happens when I get the O-ring and all that on there. I want to make sure that everything lines up. And I see the flat spot through the hole. You're checking for that as well. Just going to put a little bit of torque on these. Not much. We'll come back and tighten that up a little bit in just a minute. Now, here's the fun part where we're going to mate these two things, and we're going to try not to lose the tips of our fingers in the process. So. I'm going to grab our towel here again, and this is going to, this is what's saving our fingers. We're trying really hard not to, uh, you know, grab this with our fingers. We're trying to let the towel kind of do some of the grabbing, and then we'll pull the towel out. Um, so there we go. We got our hand kind of safely wrapped, our tips out of the way. We got most of the towel out of the pinch zone. Really watch your fingers here. If you hear me yelp on camera. Um, you'll know I failed here. So we got to slide this shaft through uh, our two bearings. Let that go through. And that snapped just like that. It didn't go all the way through, but it snapped fast. So I'm really glad my fingers were there. So now that my fingers are out of the way, we can go ahead and push it the rest of the way through the other bearing. And there we go. All right, that wasn't bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're in good shape there. Let's go ahead and throw our brass uh, spacer over the top and then get our split ring pliers. Whoops. And there's a little groove in the shaft here. And that is where that split ring is going to go around. So just want to make sure that's visible. It is. And then we're going to take this right up there. Now the trick is to open up the split ring just barely enough to get over that. So you don't want to go crazy and bend the thing and deform it. So you just want to open it just barely enough to get over. So go real slow. It's a tight, tight fit here. Get out, let go. There we go. Now we got to make sure we actually got this thing in the ring, which we don't have it right now. So we're just going to gently kind of seesaw it back and forth on each side. There we go. Let's drop it in there. Let's drop it in there. That's nicely in the channel. And just for giggles, we're going to take a pair of uh, pliers here and just kind of close that O-ring just a tiny bit because it's a little more spread open than I would like. We're just going to gently squeeze these together. All right, so now that we got all of that, let's go back and tighten our uh, grub screws all the way. Could close a little extra torque here. With that, we now have a 55 millimeter shaft in our motor. 
uh, with a set of brand new bearings. This is going to give us a ton more lifetime. Uh, and I'm looking forward to installing it in the Logo 700. And that is how you change out a shaft on an Ego Drift motor. So super not intimidating. So if you have a horrible crash, shaft bends, or you know any number of catastrophic things, um, they're very inexpensive to replace. Um, it's much cheaper than buying a whole other motor with a longer shaft for a different application. And uh, you're good to go. All right. I'm Nick Wisdom with Team Heli Direct and Ego Drift, and that is how you change it out. Thanks very much for watching.